In today's show, we look at Saturday in the NBA, what we're watching for in those seven games, streaming options for Saturday, for Sunday, for the next five days. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball, and Substack, JoshLloyd48.substack.com. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline is where the game starts. Let's talk about these games. We've got seven of them to get through. So, Warney. Let's get it on, Gilly. (laughs) Wizards Clippers is the next game, or not the next game, it's actually the first game that we are going to take a look at. Um, We know Rui Hachimura is out for Washington Um, Dillon Wright is out, but they could be returning within the next week or so. That is possible. I've seen some wild thoughts on Dillon. I had someone said, hey, should I stash him in a 10-team points league? He's like, no. I don't even think he's a 12-team category stash necessarily. I think you can consider it. I think there's a chance that maybe he takes over for Monte Morris at some point. But even if he does, I think it'd still be a minute split and it would be weeks down the down the path. So no, Dillon Wright's not a stashable player in any sort of standard format, categories or points or 10 or 12, or maybe not even 14-team leagues. That's that's debatable. Um, Norm Powell should be out for the Clippers again, but they should get back a raft of players that missed last game, um, including Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, Reggie Jackson, Luke Kennard. They should all return, but the one who probably won't is Ivica Zubats, who they said is unlikely to play on Saturday. For the Wizards, we need the status update on Bradley Beal and, of course, on Christos Porzingis. Porzingis. Um, obviously those guys being out changes a bunch with this team. So what do we want to watch for? On the Wizards side of things, it's Monte Morris, who with Beal out does project or look like a 12-team league guy. Right? He's been playing much better. The minutes have been up. We know that when they've got a fully healthy complement of players, when Beal and Porzingis and Kuzma are all out there cracking on, that Morris gets lost, his minutes get reduced, and he's not useful enough. But Beal is out, and he has to take on that larger role. I've seen a lot of talk, by the way, about so much reporting on Kyle Kuzma saying he's declining his player option. Like, yeah, of course he is. Like, how is that a surprise to anybody? It's been, oh, man, big news. Kyle's going to decline his player option. Yes, I know, because he's underpaid for what he's providing. You might not like Kyle Kuzma as a player. You might not think he's as good as he thinks he is or as certain people think he is, and that's fine. He is still playing really well, and he is still a valuable player, and he's outperforming that contract. So, of course, he's going to decline that player option. I don't know why that is such big news, and I'm making a bigger news by talking about it. Anyway, what we also want to watch is Will Barton. Now, you, Will! No, he's about to sack that. Barton went from playing 18, 14, 21, 22, 18 minutes to combining for 69 minutes in the last two games. Giggity. And playing really well. I don't know what to make of that. Is Barton a 30-minute-a-night player moving forward? I highly doubt that, especially when Beal and Porzingis come back. They don't actually need what he brings in that scenario. But even in situations where Beal has been out in the past, Barton has done nothing in those games. So, has he found his spot? Is he more comfortable now? I wouldn't rush to grab him, especially if we hear that Beal and Porzingis are playing. I guess we could take a flyer on Will if they are out. But is that just a two-game lightning in a bottle sample there? Yeah, Jordan Goodwin obviously copped the hit last game. I think he's a pretty clear 12-team league drop. And then on the Clippers, we thought there was momentum running towards Nick Batum because there was. There was clearly momentum running towards Nick Batum. Batum had played 34, 32, 33, 27, 31 minutes, and then he played 10 against the Suns. Figure that one out, get back to me. You can't. Yes, he does work better when Paul George and Kawhi are playing. He runs that small ball unit. So that is part of it, and they were out that game. So I guess expectation could be that his minutes rise back up with them back out there. But I don't know. There's just so many wing options, so many different players that they can try at those positions that feeling confident in it is really not a good idea. But seven games on, Kawhi and Paul George back, Zubat's out. Two might be worth a look there. 
And then we want to watch Kawhi Leonard. We're always wanting to watch Kawhi Leonard. If I can find his sound drop. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> because he's getting there. He's slowly getting there. He's getting back in business. It's still inefficient. We're still not back at peak Kawhi, but we're getting there. And that's what we want to keep watching. Consistent improvements. Consistent, he played 31 minutes last game. Consistent minutes improvements. It's getting there, which is great. Heat Spurs is the next game for us to take a look at. No spread or total out at this point. We know Yaka Pertl is most likely going to be out. We know Omo Yetseven is out. But there are a bunch of guys that we don't know about. For San Antonio, Romeo Langford is questionable. Langford was starting to put together some strong games, at least on court. A couple of good fantasy games and then a bit of a stinker. And then Zach Collins. That's the big one. Collins is questionable. Now, I expect if he plays that he will be the starting center and Goldfinger Charlie Bassey will come off the bench. But if Collins is out, then Bassey will start and become an excellent stream option. But we do not know that. We just don't know that at this point. And for Miami, of course, a million people are going to be listed as probable on the injury report. The one we probably need to watch out for is Gabe Vincent, who's missed like six straight games with a knee issue. We also want to watch Caleb Martin because he did leave last game early due to an injury. I don't know what the injury was, but he left for the locker room and never returned. And we don't have an update on that yet. Lowry and Adebayo and Oladipo all missed last game. They should be ready to return in this game. What we do want to watch here is Tyler Hero. Everyone has a hero. True. Zero people shouldn't have a hero. He's been playing some really huge minutes over his last seven games. 40, 37, 39, 36, 34, 40, and 40 minutes. It's a huge, huge run of minutes for Tyler Hero. Yes, in a lot of those games, there have been players out. Butler's missed two of them. Um, Lowry's missed two of them. Vincent's missed all of them. Oladipo's missed one. Bam's missed one. But they're still relying heavily on Hero, and he's on a really hot streak. He hit 10 threes last game. I think he's hit 19 threes in his last two games combined. Let's see what his minutes look like. Let's see what his playing time looks like. The other guy I want to watch, and I might not get a chance to watch him at all, is Orlando Robinson, who I thought was really good last game. He played 36 minutes with Deadman and, and um, Adebayo out. They started Haslam. Is there a chance that Robinson can overtake Dwayne Deadman as the backup center? I love what he can produce. That's what I want to watch. I highly doubt it. But say um, Deadman is out, maybe we do get some Orlando Robinson minutes. But the Spurs, I want to watch um, Keldon Johnson. Whose horse is that? Johnson has been obviously horrific with percentages at times. The volume is great. And if we get games where he's even average with both shooting numbers, then he's going to fly up through the roof. I'm never going to be consistently confident with his defensive stats or his efficiency. But let's just keep watching the minutes and the usage. His minutes have been great. He hasn't played under 33 minutes in like three weeks. That's always there. The usage is there. There is still significant improvement coming, but you've got to be willing to take it on the chin when he shoots four of 20. Like It's, it's going to happen multiple times. But the Spurs, I also want to watch Josh Richardson, who started over Devin Vassell. I don't know what this minutes restriction Vassell is on, why he's on it, and why he continues to come off the bench. I know he had a sore knee. He missed, I am sorry, he missed one game. He missed one game for knee soreness, and then was like, oh, man, knee sore. We've got to restrict his minutes. Now, I know that they're tanking, and they're pissing me off with it, so I hope they get the fifth pick in the draft. Like I, they are, I know that they are the team who is blatantly doing this nonsense all the time. But come on, man. He missed one game with knee soreness, and now he's got to be on a four-game minutes restriction. Surely, at some point, he's back starting, and we're back in a you know, normal situation. If he doesn't start this game, I don't know what I'll do. I'll yell into his microphone, and nobody will care. It's frustrating, but we want to see that if Vassell does come off the bench because his knee's too sore, no offense to Devin, it's not his choice, um, Josh Richardson has another opportunity to start and yeah, be annoying. He can hit some threes. He's not going to play 30 minutes, but there is an opportunity for him there. Can you tell that I'm annoyed at the San Antonio Spurs? Yeah, I am. Today's episode is brought to you by NHTCA because it's the holiday season and you're hanging out with some mates. You're putting back a few frothies. A few become a few too many. And as the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. You go, nah, I'm right. I live nearby. I can make it home, okay? It is no big deal. What are the worst? What, 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 not, what are the worst? What are the odds? You get pulled over anyway. It's got to be low. Even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car or you kill someone. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So if you think that you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get it right. It only, ta get it right. It only takes one mistake to change your life 
or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Today's episode is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy. It's made easy. You don't have to worry about salary caps. You don't have to worry about going up against thousands of people. They put player projections out there and you just go over or under. I wonder if they've got a player projection prop for Devin Vassell minutes. Because if it's under 30, you go under. Because that's what they're doing at the moment. But you can do that for any different type of NBA player and player projection points, rebounds, steals, assists, blocks, threes, fantasy points. You get two to six of those, stick them into a lineup, and you can win up to 25 times your entry fee. And you can do that in over 30 US states and in Canada. And you can get it done in under 60 seconds. Payouts are also fast and safe. And it doesn't just have to be the NBA. Maybe you're a boffin for disc golf. Maybe you know everything about the Pro Disc Golf Tour and you can throw in some entries into that. Or maybe it's smaller sports like the NFL or college basketball or college football. Who cares about national championships? It's all about disc golf, PGA, boxing, MMA, cricket, European basketball. I'm sure there's softball on there as well. Whatever you look for, Price Picks has it. So download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Price Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Okay. The next game is the Jazz versus the Bucks. Joe Ingles is out, but allegedly, according to Woj, which means it probably is going to happen, he's back. 10 months. 10 months after an ACL injury. Jonathan Isaac sitting there punching the air. 10 months. 10 months. Look, he probably hadn't even had surgery by then. We're still, by the way, I'm going to create a list of players who have returned from ACL surgeries before, uh, since Jonathan Isaac had his. 10 months, Ingles is going to be back. Now, it doesn't mean that he's a 10 or 12 or 14 team league ad. He had fallen off considerably before the ACL injury and he wasn't a fantasy producer and he's on an absolutely loaded Bucks team. So it's going to be a really slow process, but it just adds to their ability to have good players on the court. So he's going to be back. There is a potential that Colin Sexton returns for Utah. Where he fits into the rotation is going to be a really key thing because before he got hurt, sorry, before Conley got hurt, he played 22 minutes a night. And that's not good enough for 12 team leagues. So we want to watch that. Simone Fontecchio is questionable while Drew Holiday has missed the last two games. We hope he is able to return. For the Jazz, we want to watch the big fella. Walker must roster Kessler. He has to be rostered. It's as simple as that. Yes, there'll be nights where he plays 18 minutes and has four and four with one block. And you go, what's the point of this? But then there'll be other nights like last game where he closes. He plays 29 minutes. He blocks three shots. He gets a double-double. He shoots big percentages. He's a must roster player. There is no two ways around it. You have to do it. Also watch Mike Conley, who stunk last game. But have you noticed that since Mike Conley's come back, the Jazz are winning again? It's very similar to Al Horford in Boston. You might not think they're putting up great numbers. You might not think, or you might think they're old and get them a bit past it. But they are the key to winning. They're not the best player on the team, but they are the guy that makes them win. And that might sound a bit reductionist, like yeah, he's just a winner, he's a gamer, he just plays the right way. And that's all that stuff that people talk about is bullshit. But when these guys are playing, Horford, and I don't know why we divert into Horford, we are, but Horford and Conley, the team is better. What we would like is for Conley's numbers to be better. I Someone said, you don't talk about Mike Conley enough. Um, is he a points league guy? Yeah, I think he is. But you can judge that in your own points league. What is Mike Conley averaging in your point setting? Are there players who are five, six fantasy points better on the wave? Why? If they are, grab them. If they're not, don't grab them. Conley's got a fairly secure role. I think in a 12-team league categories, he's a clear must roster player. But I do think there's still room for improvement in what he does. For the for the Bucks, Chris Middleton, the buy low is wide open. And at some point, it's going to slam. Make sure you're not trying to piss out the window. Otherwise, you'll lose it because it is going to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but the buy low is open. People sat on this bloke for seven weeks in injured reserve, three, four weeks longer than they expected with the wrist surgery, and he came back and he's been dreadful. So they are frustrated, especially if they're in a bad position in their league. They are waited on this bloke, my fifth round pick, and look what's going on here. He's dreadful, right? So you might be able to squeeze, you might be able to squeeze some real value out of them. Now, a buy low on Chris Milton is not sending a top 50 player. A buy low on Chris Middleton is not sending a top 60 player because there is every chance in the world that Middleton actually is the 60th best player this season. That is a real possibility. 
So that's not a buy low. A buy low is sending a top 90 player, a top 100 player. Sending some Jalen Duran. Maybe it's him. Maybe it's someone who's just real. Maybe it's Jordan Clarkson who just popped off last game, right? Sending someone who doesn't really have that upside, but you're looking to target the frustrated Middleton manager. You do not have to acquire Chris Middleton. Let me get that straight again. A buy low, you do not have to get him. You do not have to. I'm going to send um, Drew Holiday to get him. That's a buy low, isn't it? Like, no, it's not. Like, CJ McCollum, is that a buy low? Eh. If I can make a very reasonable argument for the player that you are sending out, uh, CJ McCollum, to be better than Chris Middleton this season, then it's not a buy low. It's not a guaranteed L of a trade. It's not a W of a trade. But it's not a buy low. In a buy low, you want to say, I have got value. And I know I'm going to get value. And I've taken advantage of someone panicking. Getting a buy low trade and it's still being a complete toss-up with a gigantic chance that you still lose, 51-49, whatever it is, is not a buy low and there's no point in doing that deal, I don't think. It's just, it's a coin toss. So that's what I mean. Like you don't have to get him. But if you can find that deal where it makes a ton of sense because the manager's being reactive or panicking, that's what you do. Is it reactive or panicky to say that Giannis needs to pull his finger out of his ass and improve? Giannis and to talk a tom or two. Because let's be honest, he's been quite poor, especially the last three games. Now you draft Giannis and you go, I know the free throws are going to be bad. You don't expect them to be 10 percentage points worse than they were last season because, again, if you're doing projections, whether you're looking at mine or you're doing your own, if you go into a player and say, this person will shoot 10 percentage points better or worse from any particular area on the field, if that's what you project is going to happen, then you are fooling yourself. It happens, but you you can't project that sort of improvement or lack of production. You can't, you can't project it because you are lying. So when he drops 10 percentage points, you go, fuck, what's going on here? Like, why are you that much worse, right? The other, why is he shooting so much worse from two-point range? That's the most important thing. This is a bloke who would settle 62, 63%. He's at like 56, 57. And the last three games, he's actually shooting under 50% from the field. And it's not just because of all the three-point attempts. He's, that's not it. He just can't finish. So it feels blasphemous to say that a guy that you picked at number two or number three is a buy low, but he might be, but it's got to fit what you do. You can't say, well, he's a buy low or just get value. And then a team that you have is shooting 82% from the line. You grab him and now you're a 75% team and you lose that category. That might be, that might actually make sense depending on how it impacts other categories. But we need him to improve. He needs to get back to actually finishing the way that he has done for like five years in a row when there's no explanation why he's not there. It's frustrating for sure. And I think it can get better. But there will never be a point, I don't think, where Giannis's value is lower than it currently is. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bet Online, your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there. Amateur. From pro football to college bowl season to basketball, the FIFA World Cup, they've got it all at betonline.net. You can go and check all of the NFL action for their weird games on Saturday. Colts, Vikings. Finally, Jeff Saturday gets to play on, gets to coach on Saturday. But they're three and a half point underdogs and they'll probably get killed. They're up against the Vikings. You can check the odds out there. What about the Cowboys against my man Trevor Lawrence and the Jags? They're four point favorites, the Cowboys. Do you agree with that? Well, you can check it all out at Bet Online. So they're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. I just gave you some of that betting info. You can go find the rest. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online is where the game starts. Let's go to another back to back, or a back to double back to back, the Mavs and the Cavs. Um, these guys just played each other, and now they're coming off a back to back where they both play on Friday, and now they're playing each other again. The Cavs are four point favorites, and what we do want to watch, um, or injury wise, Maxi Kleber is out, Deanie Wade is out, Ricky Rubio is out. Josh Green is going to miss the game on Friday, he might play Saturday. Davis Bertans is questionable for Friday. We don't know his status. And the one I want to watch is Kevin Love, who's been dealing with the back issue. And I've marked him questionable here. He's not questionable for Friday because it's a back-to-back. And will Kevin Love play on the back-to-back with his back issue? Will he be back from his back issue for the back-to-back? We will find out. I'll get right back to you. That was so lame. Anyway, for the Mavs, Tim Hardaway. (laughs) Like, what are we going to get? 11 of 18 shooting or 2 of 5? 31 minutes or 27 minutes? There's no in-between with this bloke. It's either big chunks of points and threes 
or here's your field goal percentage. Let me take a shit on it. They're the two extremes of Tim Hardaway. Can you deal with that up and down? Then he's the player for you. If you can't, find better options. I don't really think it's that much more complicated. Don't Finney Smith got benched second half of last game for Reggie Block, not including Friday because I don't know about that yet. So watching what his role is, how it evolves, his minutes are down because he's been really bad this season. And with Block improving, they're sort of splitting some playing time. I don't think Finney Smith is anything more than a schedule stream. And if he plays under 30 minutes, he's barely that. For the Cavs, we want to watch Darius Garland, who has been struggling. The shot is off. The usage is down. At some point, I expect it to turn around, but do not expect a top 20 or top 30 season from him would be my expectation. And then we want to watch Lamar Stevens, who has a couple of, a couple of flashy games, a couple of rebound games, a couple of good block games. It's not really there all the time, but we know the role is relatively secure as the starting small forward, at least until Dean Wade returns. The Grizzlies and the Thunder is the next one. The Grizzlies are six and a half point favorites. It is a back-to-back for OKC. Bain is out. Usman Jeng is out. Jeremiah Robinson Early is out. For the Thunder, Darius Baisley is out on Friday. So I'm going to mark him questionable for Saturday. And Kenneth Williams is out for Friday. So I'll mark him questionable as well. Now, if we're going to have Robinson Early out and Baisley out, does that mean we actually get Poku starting? Again, they don't have many other options. Was Eugene Omarui going to push in? Is it big minutes for Aaron Wiggins? Their only other center really is Poku. Or maybe do they start Mike Muscala? Like there are a lot of ways that they can go. On the Grizzly side of things, I want to watch Zaire Williams. I think that he looks really big. Look, he looks tall. He looks like a power forward size player, but he's not. We're seeing the minutes push up. 22 last game. Someone asked, is there a chance that he takes over from Dylan Brooks this season? I'd say almost definitely not. But I think that's what they want him to do down the track. So they're going to just keep giving him a little bit more, a little bit more. Maybe we get 25 minutes from him. Maybe he does take over from John Concha, who played only 17 minutes in that blowout against the Bucks. So I want to see that. I also do want to watch Dylan Brooks, who, despite me criticizing him, because he's annoying, like he's a terrible player at times with terrible shot selection, it has been reined in a little bit lately. And I've been impressed with that from Brooks for the majority of this season. When Bain was healthy, he took a backseat to Bain nearly every game. There's been times when he doesn't take that backseat in the past. In fact, all of last season, he never took the backseat. But this season, he has. So he's turned into a better option for fantasy. Still punt field goal, but a better option. For the Thunder, we want to watch the Bronco, Jalen Williams. Broncos country, let's ride. He's actually available in tons of leagues. I think over 70% of Yahoo leagues is available in still. I don't agree with that. I, I know it is luxury stash. It's probably less luxury than Tari Eason, though. He's getting good minutes, like nearly every night. And with multiple people out of this lineup, like Robinson Earl and maybe Baisley, and the fact that he's pushing himself to probably be a better player than Lou Dort really quickly, I think he's a 12-team guy. The other one I watch is Isaiah Joe. That's more for deeper leagues. His shooting's great. He's taken over from Trey Mann, in my opinion, and apparently Mark Dagnott's opinion as well. I really like his three-point streaming, but that is more um, just for deeper league formats. The Blazers and the Rockets is the next game. The Blazers are three and a half point favorites here. Gaz Payton is out. Nasir Little is out. The Wild Thing, Jay Sean Tate is out. We don't have an update. By the way, I just talked about the Spurs. um, And just as I'm recording this, Josh Richardson, he's out. Like, personal reasons. So, yeah. Hope everything's okay. Hope it's not bullshit. But what they did do... Shout out to terrible injury reporting is make Yucca Pirtle probable. That's sick, isn't it? Like, yeah, Pirtle's out for the, all this time and now he's probable. So, yeah, great. While um, Zach Collins is probable and Romeo Langford's questionable. So, yeah, there we go. So, just all that Spurs stuff, just throw it in the bin. It's all it's all different now. Um, All right. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah, the Rockets. Alperen Sengun sprained his ankle at the end of last game. He didn't return to the game. We haven't had an update to see whether it's serious or not. I really worry about what happens if they start Bruno Fernando. Would they even give it back to Shengun? We know that Silas has absolutely no idea how to use Shengun. Someone asked me, like, how long do we persist with Alpren Shengun? How long do you persist with a guy that's been a top 70 player this season? Like, all fucking season. Honestly, sometimes I don't understand what... It's for people, man, do I drop Al Horford? Like, no. What are, you, what are we talking about with all of this stuff? I think we just need to sometimes take a collective deep breath and settle down with sometimes our our overreaction. Hey, do I overreact to stuff? At times, yeah, of course. But bloody hell. Like, what do we do with Shangun? Look, like, nothing. We hold him. He, even though the minutes are frustrating, the production is fine. And we just keep rolling with it. For the Blazers, Anthony Simons. Last game was really good. It was against the Spurs team, who struggled. Let's see if he's able to maintain usage and efficiency next to the little. That's always going to be the question. 
But what else can he supplement it with? His assists get down, his rebounds are nothing, his steals are low. Let's see. Also, Drew Eubanks. Deeper leagues, you want to watch Drew Eubanks. He can block some shots at a pretty high rate. He's got a good field goal percentage. If uh, Nurkic gets in foul trouble, he, he's going to be useful. He's always some to watch in deep leagues. For the Rockets, Ty Ty Washington has taken over from Dacian Nix as the backup point guard. Dynasty League, pay attention. His price in Dynasty Leagues is about to go up really soon, I think. I don't think he's going to impact many redraft leagues, but we want to watch that. We also want to watch Jalen Green, who is getting better. There's still going to be downturns in either assists, lack of steals, poor field goal percentage, but we're starting to see it get put together more often than not. And we hope that that trend is able to continue. The Pelicans and Suns. Uh, is this the third, third, fourth time they're playing each other already this season? I don't know. They play each other every day, it feels like. No spread or total for them at the moment for this one. Ingram is out. Cam Johnson is out. I don't know about Jose Alvarado, Cameron Payne, or DeAndre Ayton. I expect that Ayton will play. Payne, I'm not sure about. But the Pelicans, Trey Murphy has been bad. I still think he's worth persisting with in a 12-team league. But when Ingram comes back, it gets worse. And if you've got the option of, hey, do I add Walker Kessler? Then, yeah, you drop Trey Murphy. That's where he sort of sits. But otherwise, he's on the hold line. I also watch Najee Marshall, who's been... A big surprise this season. I think he's still probably a little bit overrated, and I don't think he is a 12-team league player, but there are times when he gets in there and plays more minutes than you expect. For the Suns, Devin Booker is in a real cold patch. I don't know that he's a buy low, but it is obviously really poor at the moment. And some of that, whether it's coincidentally or not, he dropped off basically as soon as Chris Paul returned. And he jumped up when Chris Paul was out. Is that coincidence? I don't know. But it also happened last season, that when Chris Paul was out, he became a top 10 player. Also watch Josh Okoge. I don't know how he gets enough minutes to be valuable, but he's getting them. Like 25, 26 a night. Sometimes it's Tory Craig, the cops are hit. It's campaign being out. It's Aiton being out. Yeah, Okoge is playing well. Enough to be a 12-team league guy? I don't think so. 16 teams? Yeah. 14 team? Maybe. But he's been really, really interesting. Let's look at the streaming options for the weekend. It's the Wizards. They play a back-to-back on, on Saturday, Sunday. So stream those guys in and... I would expect that Beal and Porzingis do not play in both of those games. So you fire up your Avdias, your Bartons, your Goodwins, your Gaffords. All those guys who are available who probably get a big boost in at least one of those games. For category leagues, well, Zach Collins or Charles Bassey would have been good streams, but Pirtle is back, so I think we can forget that. John Conchar can be a stream, but he's a little iffy at times. It's, it's not a great stream either. Let me get that clear. Grayson Allen, stunk last game. Josh Richardson is out. Nick Batum, I expect his minutes to rise with Paul George and Kawhi back, but I don't know that. Denny Avdia, we just talked about, but if Beal returns, he might just go completely invisible. And then Eric Gordon is a stream. But watch for other options. Like, if Zubats is out for the Clippers, Moses Brown becomes a great stream. If DeAndre Ayton is out, you've got Bismack Biombo or Jack Landale as an option as well. Figuring out whether it's going to be Biombo or Landale, I've got no idea because the Suns don't know. They change their mind every day. But one of those guys might become that option there. That's what you need to pay attention to. For deeper leagues, um, ignore Josh Richardson at the top there, but Eric Gordon, Lamar Stevens, Victor Oladipo, he might even be a 12-team stream. Bates Diop, Paddy Connaughton, Luke Kennard, and Jeremy Sohan. Sohan now! Points leagues, again, the Spurs center, forget them. Jalen Williams is available everywhere, basically. Moses Brown's a solid stream. Marcus Morris can be streamed in with less confidence, but yes. Grayson Allen... Victor Oladipo could also be a points league stream, even in a 12-teamer just for this game. In terms of low-volume guys over the next five days, we have got um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is low-volume days, whereas Wednesday isn't. Walker Kessler, look, he's got to be rostered anyway, but to, to help you out, he's got three low-volume games in the next four nights. It's great. It's great. Tory Craig, three in the next four nights. It's great value. I know the last game was a stinker from Craig, but that's really solid. Monte Morris, Denny Avdia, three games in the next four nights, Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday. Really good value for those guys. Even with the return of Beal and Porzingis, I don't think they play in all of them. Bones Highland's got two low volume games. He's a solid add. Kyle Anderson's available. Larry Nance, still available in over 40% of leagues. Should not be. And Dan Gafford. Yes, he might start one game out of the three. But you might get 27 minutes and then 17 and 17. And they're all in low volume nights. It's three games for the price of one. It's in four days. It's a really good price to pay, I think. And lastly, we look at the next five days just in totality 
Nyeka Okongwu. Two games in the next five days, but he's going to be startable on, on all those. You want to roster him. These first seven names here are all guys who are going to be top 100 players, I think, on a per-game basis over the next five days due to injuries and circumstance or just people not realizing they need to be rostered. Okongwu's got two games. Larry Nance has two games. Kyle Anderson has three. The five-minute man, Bones Highland, has two. Dante DiVincenzo, absolutely a must-roster guy with Steph out and Wiggins out at least one of those games. Walker Kessler's a must-roster player. And Bruce Brown's got two games as well, which we expect Maga Porter to be out of. And then the other one to watch is Jaden McDaniels. He does have three games in the next five nights. He is relatively inconsistent, but the volume of games there, the opportunity, you think he pops off in at least one of them and gives you something. And that will do it for me today. Thank you, Spurs, for screwing me up by announcing random changes to your injury report in the middle of the show. Follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are on YouTube, thumb it up. Leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.